Okay, so today uh, you already have um, uh, team up with your teammates and uh, decided uh, a topic and my students have discussed with you what you are going to work on. So in this course, you may need to use finite element. Okay. So today I would like to share some idea of finite element with you, so that when you use it, you don't um, you don't make uh, uh, you don't make uh, unforgivable unforgivable mistakes. Okay. So. Uh, If you download a CAD software, uh, sometimes it's very easy to uh, create finite elements. And nowadays, not many professors will teach you what's behind finite element. So I decided to teach you what's behind it. But I cannot teach you the whole thing because uh, this is a this is the course note for my graduate graduate course uh, in USA so this is a book written by my one of the professor in USA and he took one semester to finish the entire book so it's, it's impossible for me to finish this. And it's not necessary. For you guys, I just want you to have a basic idea. Okay? So, uh, there are several things that you need to uh, know about. Uh, there is one equation called F equals to K times D. Okay, and F is a vector, K is a matrix, D is a vector. So what are those? F is a, a, a vector of forces uh, applied at uh, each node. So right here, you there's a new um, terminology node. I will tell you what what is a node, okay? Okay, and also K, we call it stiffness matrix. Stiffness matrix. So why the term stiffness? This is a matrix that includes many information uh, that is related to how stiff the material is or how strong the material is. Basically, it's a matrix about material property. Properties, a lot of properties. Such as what? Such as uh, spring coefficient. If you treat a material like a spring, then it's a linear material. In that case, k will be the spring coefficient, right? So what is d? d is a vector. Sometimes we call it degree of freedom. Degree of freedom. or displacement. Okay, 
So basically, the movement of nodes, the node again. Okay. So I need to tell you what is a node. So let's say I have a material. So this is like a, a work, a, a material that you are you are uh, working on, and you cut this material into small pieces. You cut. Okay, and each of the cut is called one element. So for finite element, the method cut the material into small pieces, and each piece is called one element. And why do you call finite, not infinite? Infinite is is like a very huge number. This is infinite. Infinite. But we are cutting the material into some number we can see. It's not like an infinitely large number. It's a finite number. Okay? So infinite is like, a, in Chinese, it's like this. Right? And finite, finite is like this. It's a number that you can see. Maybe 10,000, 100,000, something like that. Okay? So you cut a material into, for example, 10,000 elements. So once you cut them into small pieces, each element is connected to another element. And there are some points at the interface, at the uh, uh, between multiple elements. So they are called nodes. Okay, they are the nodes. Okay. So get back to what we talk about. We this equation describe what happened inside the entire workpiece and describe what's going on for each node. So let's focus on one node. So let's say this is a node inside the finite element. And we may have a coordinate system x, y, and z. So this node could be deforming or moving when this piece, this material, is under some kind of load. So let's say I have a piece of metal. If I apply force, it starts to deform. And since it deforms, if I cut this metal into 10,000 pieces and I focus on one point, a node, due to that deformation, the node moves a little bit due to that external load. So how do we describe that kind of movement? We, will, we could say, okay, there's a deformation along x direction we have we may have deformation along y direction we may have deformation along z direction so for that node we could have deformations along three directions and also for that node if i apply a force from somewhere the force will be transmitted to that element. So some portion of the force will be applied to the node. So there could be some force along x, y, and z direction. Okay? 
So what happened inside finite element is we put all the nodal forces and the nodal displacements, you can call them nodal forces and the nodal displacements. displacements. You can put them together into a long vector, very long. So, F, like I said, is a long vector. It could be a very long vector, and inside this vector, you could have the forces of this node along three different directions. And you may have a very large K matrix over here, and also a bunch of uh, displacements. And the displacements along all three directions will be placed inside this vector and matrix format. So this method basically considers every element like a spring. If we know the most important thing is if we know the coefficient inside this k, and if we know some information here and some information here, we can then solve this equation in order to determine everything. Okay, so this is what finite element method did. The method will formulate this long matrix, a huge matrix system. And it has, on the left hand side, it has all the nodal forces of each element along each direction. So it could be very long. Let's say, how, let's estimate what would be the size of this matrix. If I have 10,000 nodes, and each node has three directions. Then we have a 30,000 times one vector right here. This is how large this vector could be because uh, each node could have forces along three directions. Okay, and similarly, your displacement vector can also have this huge size, 30,000 times 1. And your K matrix will be 30,000 times 30,000. It's a square matrix, very large. Okay, so it's impossible for us to calculate this by hand. That's why finite element usually almost always is solved by computers. Okay? So, uh, I would like to share with you, share a very simple problem with you. So you can kind of have a, a, a little idea. So let's, this is already a problem that is too difficult because uh, there is already more than more than 10 nodes and each node has three directions already something i cannot solve in class just show you how this linear problem later on uh, become more complex at the at the end what, what's gonna happen you could start to formulate um, multiple linear functions, linear um, elements. So this is like a um, start with individual ones and then you could combine even more um, elements. And this is only, at the beginning, there's only one element, but later on there are multiple elements. So you need to give numbers. Uh, over here, 
the circles represent the element numbers. Okay, and over here, I'm using non circled numbers. There are no numbers. Okay. Okay. And uh, in this particular one, there are some dimensions here. This should be the problem that I introduced, not the other one. Okay. And the coordinate system are located at uh, x, y coordinate, a, a, a planar problem. So overall, uh, three elements, because uh, we have uh, three lines and four nodes. Over here you can see node number one connects with the other, uh, connects with all three elements. And node two, three, and four connects to the wall. Okay, and let me get rid of, uh, ig ignore the derivation. Let me show you what, what's happening at the end. At the end, it, it's gonna be like this. It, it's a huge matrix. And inside, there it, it looks like this. Okay, F1, X, and F1Y represent what? F1X is basically over here. This is F uh, node 1 and the force along X. And here, maybe I draw like this. This is F1Y. So later on, the matrix will be formulated and there will be a huge matrix about the material property. So I'm not, I'm just going to write down some numbers so for you to, because um, uh, it makes no sense for you to understand what's be inside of it. Uh, there are some numbers I can copy from my notes. Just copy some numbers. You won't, I won't cover the whole thing. Just for you to kind of have, have an idea. Okay, this is the first one. Due to some force analysis, there are some numbers here. Okay, and let me copy another one. Just two of them, okay? Just copy two of them, and there are more. So this is a huge K matrix. And over here, this will be U1, and we use V right here, V1. So U1, what is U1? Or, or we can write it in the way you, you understand it. 1X and U1Y. So, this element has a displacement of U1X and U1Y. So this is what happened. Uh, first, uh, the, if there's a linear element, computers will formulate this huge matrix. And when there's only three elements, four nodes, computer already needs to build up this huge matrix. And for this one, this is an 8 by 1 vector. This is an 8 by 8. This is an 8 by 1. How come it's an 8 by 1? Because we have four nodes. Each node has force along x and y only. 
So totally we have eight force components and eight displacement components. Okay? And what's inside the middle basically will be derived by force analysis, which I didn't do pretty well today, I'm sorry. I should have used this example. And I missed to calculate one number, which is A, E over L. Okay, I forget to put this right here. It's a huge, I can copy this to you if you're interested, but even I copy this to you, it, it, it doesn't help you um, uh, solving the problem, okay? Just for you to, to, to quickly understand. And uh, in this finite element course, what I learned was we can formulate even more complex elements. So here's a, another example where we learned how to formulate triangular elements. Triangular elements. So this is one element. So at this point, this becomes a, a, not a line. It becomes a, a piece of surface. Okay? And for this one, we will have, for example, three nodes, A, B, C. So this is one element, three nodes. A, B, C. And what finite element does is that you can actually calculate any point inside the triangle. Any point. Sorry. So the method can calculate the force and displacement. at any point inside the element. And again, you need, we need to formulate huge uh, matrix for just one element and three nodes. Okay? And uh, let me see if I have one. Okay, one example. So at the end, this is also a 2D case. So we would have F, node A, direction X, node A, direction Y, da da da. So this would be a 6 by 1, equals to the huge K matrix, and then displacement node A along X, displacement node A along Y, also 6 by 1. So sometimes when you, um, if you, let's say, we, uh, I don't have internet here, hold on. If we solve a, sorry, finite, element triangle triangle okay we can take some uh, something like this okay if this is a planar problem we can try to separate cut this entire piece into small triangles. And for every triangle, you can formulate what I showed you earlier, like this. Then you can study the whole thing. You, will, you can uh, analyze ev the uh, displacement everywhere. Okay? So even for uh, objects in regular shapes, or like this. Let's say you have a you have a, a plate, but there's a hole inside. 
in the textbook, we already learn how to, or, or in traditional uh, mechanics, we learn how to solve a plate problem. Even for plate problems, we are not good at it. It's very complicated, right? So uh, it, usually we solve very simple problems in textbook. Okay, and uh, that, let me let me show you. Uh, let's say if we, we if we uh, a plate, uh, this is like a, a stress problem. Yeah, let's say we have a plate problem like this. Okay, yeah. Just one rectangular plate. The stress inside is the the, the moment inside is uh, like a current function. And if the moment inside is a curved function, then the stress inside is a curve, right? And in stress analysis, we, we, learn, we learn how to solve a problem like this, but this is already very difficult for you. And we, for a problem like this, sometimes we need to check our textbook, because on the back, there is already analytical equations. But, how about a problem like this? It's almost too difficult for you to solve it. That's why uh, it's, uh, it's important to use computer softwares for undergraduate students. And I can share with you um, another case, okay, like a, in, 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 but at the time when I tried to learn this course, uh, we there's one homework which is about a four-node rectangular rectangle. Okay, so over here uh, we have node one, two, three, and four, and this is one element. Okay, and for this case, at the end, it's going to be. Uh, a times 1 and a by 8 this is your force vector this is your k and this is your displacement a by 1 basically um, the force is at each node along each direction and the displacement at each point along each direction and let me take a picture uh, to show you how it looked like. I have in my in my book, let me just take a picture so you can see it, see it on the screen. So this was my ho my homework when I took the course. We have four, uh, 16 rectangles placed together, and then uh, we need to use answers to solve for this problem. Okay, so you can see how the elements change its shape after we apply certain loads. Okay, so uh, 
And there are many kinds of elements. And the difference between each kind of the monomation, basically, they have different ways of formulating K. And some numerical models that are used for uh, thin plates, or there are some models used for nonlinear materials. So the most important thing for you when you use a material is to choose the material property wisely. And then uh, usually the software right now is quite smart. It will pick up which numerical model to be used. If you didn't choose the element model properly, typically a software will tell you, right? And the software right now is quite smart so that you won't make, you, you it's almost uh, difficult for you to make mistakes. But I, I still wish, uh, although I did a good, did a good job, uh, I, while, while I was doing the derivation, I, I, I paused and then couldn't find a good way to introduce it. But uh, at the end, the, um, what I wish you to understand for today is that fi the method of finite element basically cut the whole thing into small pieces. And right now, you, what you can see is only plan, planar elements. But if it's a solid, it cut the entire material into small cubes or small uh, solid elements in some particular shapes. And if it's a small cube, basically the same idea. If it's a cubic, cubic element, then it's a 3D problem you will have eight nodes and three directions. So at the end, only for this one element, you will have 24 by one force vector. And your uh, K will be 24 by 24. And your U will be 24 by one. Because uh, for every node, you need to describe the deformation and the forces along each direction. Okay, so this is the takeaway for today. This is for you to know, okay, what is finite element method? And next time, I will ask uh, my students to demonstrate how to use it. So later on, you can come to our lab to use the software. And I hope at least, at least in the future, when someone asks you, hey, do you, what is finite element? You can just tell me, okay, what happened is you cut a whole piece into small elements and for each element there are multiple nodes at the corners and the mathematics behind it analyze the nodal forces and the nodal elements. And there are some numerical models which describes the material property and formulate a huge matrix called stiffness, stiffness matrix, which is something you don't need to worry about at this point. Yeah. And, and the software handles it for you. Okay, so that, that would be the takeaway. And I, I, I should have done a better job today, but I didn't, I'm sorry. And uh, if you are really interested, I can take uh, photocopies of some of my notes uh, it could be very difficult to understand, but that's fine. If you are interested, you can take a look, and the my note uh, will explain better than my today's lecture. And if you feel interesting and wish me to go through the note, I can do it again. I can try again next time if you wish. Uh, but uh, the notes right here is not the main scope of this lecture. The, the only takeaway for today is for you to understand what's a final element method. Okay? And I'll see you again on Wednesday, and the main purpose of Wednesday's lecture would be uh, allowing you to know how to use the software.
Okay? Someone will be here and introduce how to use it. That's it for today.